topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Who is January Jones? She is not a young, beautiful, talented actress on Mad Men. She is not an older, gorgeous, exotic dancer from the Johnny Carson Show. She is an author, and she wrote, Thou Shall Not Wine, the 11th commandment that reached number one at Amazon.com. She is a reality TV golf personality with World High Stakes Golf televised on HDNet. She is a humorist and winologist expert. She is your featured host today on January Jones Sharing Success Stories. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and listen to Ms. Jones with her eclectic roster of guests as you learn life's lessons. These stories plus sharing equals success. Welcome and remember, beware. Because you are entering the no whining world of January Jones. Hello, I'm January Jones, and I'd like to welcome you to our podcast today. Now, for my listeners, let me ask you a question. Can you imagine what it would be like to be able to find clues? to your own destiny. Would you like to learn more about the work that you came here to do, what you were sent here for? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to explore outrageous new possibilities, new experiences, new things? Do you ever wish you could meet someone who can help you break through your fears? Are you ready to make some big changes in your life? If you can answer yes or maybe to any of these questions, then you are in the right place. And I'd like to welcome you to January Jones Sharing Success Stories. So now it's time to rest and relax. Go get some wine and cheese and crackers and join me in the no wine zone. Today, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my guest. She's been on the show before, and I'm so pleased to have her back with us. She is a career intuitive coach. She is ordained unity minister, just recently ordained. She's a soul regression therapist. Her work is described as a breath of fresh air and an enlightened new perspective that has been featured in the New York Times, CNN.com, Real Simple, Complete Woman, Woman's World, and many others. Her work combines a unique gift of powerful, intuitive, and practical career know-how. She has been a guest on more than 200 radio shows and numerous TV shows. It's my pleasure to welcome back Sue Frederick. Hi, Sue. Hi, January. Such a joy to see you again. (laughs) It's wonderful to finally get to see you. Sue has been a guest on my show through the years, and uh, many of your shows I've had for replays, and your ratings are always wonderful. Your shows have been so enjoyed by my fans. You know, before we begin, let me ask you a little bit about how the pandemic has affected you, how it's affected your career, and uh, just share with us your some stories from the pandemic. Yeah, I, um, just like everybody, I believe it was a reset button set, you know, in our collective consciousness that we all needed to kind of go home, be quiet, and reflect. <laughs> And so for me, I quit traveling to teach and traveling to speak and had to learn how to do all this Zoom kind of stuff that we're doing. But then I also went to school. I decided that I wanted my own spiritual reboot. And so I became a unity minister. That was four years of online school. And um, so I would say that coming out of COVID and the pandemic, 
what I have done is kind of recalibrate my work and my life to even a higher kind of spiritual understanding and ability to help clients. Oh, yeah. I know everyone has had to redo, regroup. Um, it's been a trying time for everyone. And I think a lot of people have suffered. Um, there's been a lot of depression that comes along with it. Don't you agree? Yeah, I work with clients every day and I have for 20 years. And, you know, I can really notice the trend of people feeling so isolated, so lonely, and so anxious. But I really look at that as all of us being called to kind of do some inner reflection. And if we're not on our right soul mission career path, it's time to tweak it and reinvent it. And it's a great opportunity for that. Yeah. And I mean, so many people are searching and looking and this time out has, although it's been difficult, uh, there has been so much good that has come since people have been able to slow down, reevaluate. Now you shared with me before we went on the air that you used this time to become an ordained minister. Share with us that experience. Well, when 2016 and 2017 hit, I was kind of burned out on my work. I'd been seeing clients every day for 20 years. I'd written seven books and I was out speaking and teaching and traveling all the time. And I hit a point of burnout and I knew that spiritually my work was always helping people heal grief heal career confusion by kind of looking at it from a higher spiritual perception. I'm not talking religion. I'm talking about who are you as a soul? Why did you come here? What is your great work that you brought with you? And I needed what I felt like was a validation, a reboot, a confirmation of my spiritual perspective. So it wasn't just from me and my experiences and going to four years of ministry school, getting to study theology, history of Christianity, metaphysics, so many amazing things, mm -hmm. validated things that I knew in my heart were true so that I could now, for example, work with a grieving mom whose child might have taken their own life. And I can spiritually be confident in saying, your child is doing great. There is no hell. No God sent your child to hell and you have done nothing wrong. And I sort of have now a spiritual level of authority to comfort people with that. And uh, that's the greatest work of my life. Oh, I, I totally applaud you for it. And uh, it is so difficult when people lose children or lose any member of their family. And you're such an incredible grief counselor. And the fact that you're approaching it and giving people hope and telling them that these uh, lifelong love connections continue, even though uh, death interrupts and it creates a different dynamic uh, what a healing gift you've been given to share with us. I'm so happy about that. You know, we're going to take a break right now and hear about my book, Thou Shalt Not Wine. Lately, there's a whining epidemic in our world. People are even whining about whining. Are you sick and tired of listening to everyone whining all the time? So was January Jones, the author of Thou Shall Not Wine, the 11th commandment that reached number one at Amazon.com. Ms. Jones based her book on a survey of the top 10 things that people whine about at all ages and all stages of life. January is a success coach that can tell you how to help others. When you buy Thou Shall Not Wine, the 11th commandment, you'll find out what people whine about and how to stop them from whining. This is the perfect gift book to give or get for any occasion. Thou Shall Not Wine was voted the best gift to be given anonymously for those special people in your life. Ms. Jones is an internationally known author in the style of Irma Bombeck, specializing in housewife humor with her book being published in Korea and China. You can find Thou Shall Not Wine at Amazon.com. 
Welcome back to the No Wine Zone with my guest, Sue Fredericks, who is definitely not a whiner because she is a winner. <laughs> Sue, before we go on, could you share with our fans your contact information and tell them how they can get your books? They can go to my website, suefrederick.com. And also this book here is for anyone who's grieving and you can get it on Amazon. It's Bridges to Heaven, True Stories of Loved Ones on the Other Side. But January, what I love about your book is you're telling people to take responsibility for their lives. And that's what I do too with different words and different approaches. But clients will come to me and go, oh, I was fired and it was my boss's fault. And I'll go, consider the possibility that your soul wanted to reinvent. And so you kind of sabotage something to get you out of that job and out of that career because you have something greater to do here through your work. And clients will sometimes fight against that, but eventually they come to see it. And then they have these amazing success stories. Yeah. And, you know, that goes back to my childhood because my uh, wonderful, dear, lovely Polish grandma, anytime anything would happen that was a disappointment or wasn't happy about, she would always say, no, just relax, take your time. Some things happen for the best and you're not always privy to why. But right. if you sit back and look at things through the past, it does. it's a true statement. It's very comforting for people. Uh, I also was going to mention to everyone that my Thou Shalt Not Wine book has just come out an audio book and mm -hmm. it's now available at audible.com. And I'm next week I'm going to have my guest, uh, the gal, wonderful gal, the genie, the story genie who did my audio book will be with us. You know, this podcast is live every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope everyone will tune in again as we're having lovely guests like Sue. Now, Sue, when we started, I asked my listeners about how to find their destiny, their clue. And could you share with them what they can do to find this? Oh, that is my specialty. <laughs> And even when I work with grieving clients, the approach I bring is you're still here for a reason. Your soul chose to go through this for um, a purpose and a gift of spiritual awakening, however you define that, and to really get you to your soul's true work. And that if you're still here, there's work to be done. And you're here on purpose, so let's get to it. And in my books, I really help people figure that out. I've used intuition and sacred numerology since the 80s, actually. Uh -huh. And I help a client. if they When they come to work with me, I've already done their numerology, astrology. I've meditated on their path. I've downloaded guidance for them. And we start from there and I help them navigate their reinvention cycles. And all of that is explained in all of my books. And you can go to suefrederick.com and click on any of those books and it'll take you to Amazon to, to buy them. Um, and to this day, 20 years after its publication, my I See Your Dream Job book is still helping people. And that explains this method that I use. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, go to uh, suefrederick.com if you want to find out more information, if you're interested in working with Sue. So many people uh, discover the work they came here to do a little bit later in life. You know, it's not automatically revealed to you because <laughs> so many young people struggle with what they're to do. And when you have people who are older is there how do you help them to figure it out what their what their purpose is well i work with clients of all ages because what i know to be true is we have certain pre predestined reinvention points that we each hit and they're unique for all of us and when i do your chart i can really help you understand them but in our 20s it's all the lesson of our 20s 
is to not listen to what the world tells us we're here to do or be, and instead to begin to see who we really are. And I love helping people in their 20s, and they may throw out their business degree that they once got that doesn't mean anything to them and begin to find their true path and their true work. And we hit in our late 20s a time of reinvention, all of us. It's called Saturn return in astrology. And so when a 20 something child comes to me and says, I feel lost, I don't wanna be a lawyer anymore. I'm all in to help them. And there's always a way through to your greatest work. And the main thing I want these 20 something kids to know is if you're struggling, you're not alone and there is a way through. And so many 20 something people have trouble figuring out how to succeed in this world today. But you are on a sacred mission, no matter how hard things may seem and you have a way through this. And if you can only afford a Kindle book on Amazon, please get my dream job book and find your way through it. <laughs> because well, there is a way. <laughs> we're going through this in our family because all of our, most of our, well, our six grandchildren, they're all at the verge of get, leaving college. Some have graduated. They're all looking for careers there. They've got their degrees and it's like, now what, you know? Yeah. And so many times you, uh, I think you just have to try different things. And I yeah. think that sometimes when by mistake and other times when you said inflection point, describe what that would be like for someone young. Yeah. So a reinvention point is when everything we know to be true about ourselves seems it's gone. Like we're suddenly at this place where the person I thought I was growing up or the person I thought I was in school, that's not who I am. And it doesn't feel right anymore. And we start looking inward and going, but I've always had this tiny dream that I never even put a voice to, to do this other thing and make my living from it. And if it's in alignment with your soul's mission, and that's a numerology conversation, then there is always a way to, get, to make that happen. And it's not a direct thing. So for example, I'm a writer. I knew I was a writer from the time I was five years old and my grandpa put a typewriter in front of me and I typed out a story. Yeah. And and so I thought in my early twenties, oh, well then I'm here to be a writer. I went to journalism school and and I took that path for a long time of writing news articles. And then I became a magazine editor, but I wasn't writing what my soul wanted to write. And mm -hmm. when I hit my reinvention point, I said, you know, I have to do what's in my heart and speak from my soul and my writing can support that. And that's when I launched this work and the magic happens then. Mm -hmm. And that's being uh, true to yourself. And you encourage people to explore, I love this one, outrageous possibilities, which is what you've done. And in a little bit, I've done a little bit of that. I started my writing career when I was 50. So it took a long time for me to figure yeah. out what I should be doing. And I think there's another big reinvention point we hit in our 50s. That's the second one. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's called the second set in return. And I help so many clients who, when they hit their 50s, they feel, you know, again, the kids are gone, grown and gone. Their marriage might be in trouble. They feel lost. They don't want to go back to their old career. It doesn't resonate anymore. That's a beautiful point of reinvention. And there's always a way through it to your great work. I help so many clients in that in that situation. Oh, my gosh. It's so true for me. Speaking of outrageous possibilities, when <laughs> I was 50, that's when I started writing about the Kennedys. And it doesn't get more outrageous than that. So great. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Are you still wondering who killed Kennedy? Over 50 years later, the assassination is still a mystery. It is unfinished business for our country. Now, get ready for a theory that you've never heard before, but will make more sense than any other conspiracy theory that you've ever heard in the past. January Jones speaks the unspeakable in her book, 
Jackie, Ari, and Jack, the tragic love triangle connecting Jackie and Aristotle Onassis romantically prior to JFK's assassination. Did you know that Ari was Jackie's guest in the White House during the JFK funeral? He was the only non-family member who was invited by Jackie to stay there during the funeral. Aristotle Onassis was one of the wealthiest men in the world, with the means, the motive, and the money to order an assassination that was the perfect crime of the last century. Ari needed class, and Jackie needed cash. They were perfect for each other. Now, what is Camelot? It is but another tragic love triangle. Jackie, Ari, and Jack is available at JanuaryJones.com, Amazon.com, and Audiobooks.com, read by Ms. Jones. Welcome back with my wonderful guest, Sue Projects. Sue, before we uh, took our break, we were talking about outrageous possibilities, and I'm a living example of that. But then you encourage people to break through their fears and to remove negative patterns. Give us an example of doing that. What would that be like for someone? So, for example, we have these two ways that we view our life and our career, especially. And one way is what I call the ego human story that says, I'm struggling with this career. I'm struggling with money and all of these things that the negative monkey mind tells us. Right. But we also have our soul's wisdom. You can call it heart wisdom. You can call it intuition. I call it our divine self whispering to us going, you have a gift. There's something else you're here to do. And that you agree to all of these challenges you're going through because your soul wanted to grow and evolve and eventually help others from what you've learned. So as you say, quit whining <laughs> and start looking for that next way. And I believe that our pain is our greatest fuel. And what I mean by that is our greatest work offers to the world what we wish had been offered to us in our moment of greatest pain. So for example, my husband died of cancer when I was 29. He died in my arms. He was an incredible, loving, sweet man. And that heartbreak that I hit in my Saturn return at 29 caused me to go on my spiritual seeking journey, my career seeking journey for meaningful work and meaningful life. Today, I work with so many grieving clients and I help them find their purpose that they're still here and how to move forward, especially grieving parents. I love helping grieving parents. You know, that's so important. I, uh, I lost my first husband when I was 32 and being a young widow was just a real wake-up call. Uh, yeah. I read your book, and I could really empathize with so many of the things you went through. Mm -hmm. I, I think I was in a more fortunate situation just because I, at that time I had two babies. Wow. And, of course, I had no choice. One was six weeks old when he died. So I definitely mm -hmm. had to step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. And it forced me to go forward. And uh, your book was very inspiring. And I would recommend your books to anyone who knows someone who has lost someone, someone who's struggling. And it's, it's always a struggle. I don't care how old you are. You can be 29 or 79. Yeah. Losing your spouse, your mate is one of the biggest uh, challenges you'll ever face in your life. Absolutely. And you yeah. know, January, you hit when you were going through your widowhood early on, you hit the point that, you know, I hit also that says, you know, the world hands us this crazy myth that we find our career, we get married, have a family and live happily ever after. I can guarantee you after working with clients for decades, there's nobody here living happily ever after. We're all here on a journey of inner growth. And that means we constantly have to go into the heart and quiet the mind and say, what is the lesson in this that my soul is trying to learn? And how can I move forward with love and 
positivity and optimism and compassion and figure out how I'm here to help others with what I've learned. If you can just put that in your heart, you can get through anything. That is so true. And as you said, no one gets the golden ticket. You look at people and you think, oh, their life must be this or that. You don't know what goes on behind right. those doors and you don't know the struggles. And, and we I would reflect so much onto other people, don't you think, January? Like even celebrities, we look at them and go, oh, well, their life must be so great. Uh-uh, you don't know the backstory. You don't know what they're struggling with. We're all here on a journey of growth. And uh, what I found particularly helpful uh, reading your books was that what, how you stress how important meditation, how important it is to quiet down, to let, uh, to let the universe in. You know, it's amazing if you just can master those few, maybe just moments per day and just let everything revolve around you and seep in. Uh, meditating, I think, is so helpful for most people, don't you? You know, I just think we can't even live here in the physical world and know who we are unless we sit in the silence at least 10 minutes a day and do whatever meditation technique that you that works for you. For me, I use the ancient Hindu and Buddhist approaches of quieting the mind, but whatever works for you to quiet the mind, then you begin to learn, no, I'm not these crazy thoughts in my head. I am not this human drama story. When I'm quiet, I begin to hear that divine self speaking. And that's the guidance we can trust. Mm -hmm. You know what I do, and I found for me, everyone, it, how you do it's your own method. For me, I found that uh, walking. And while I'm walking, I listen to easy listening music. I turn off my ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> and I listen to music that's meditative and calming. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's amazing when you're out there, the things that will pop in right. your head. And you get the download from spirit. <laughs> and a lot of it is just such positive energy. Uh, and in, as you said, 10 minutes is enough. You don't have to sit there for hours and some uncomfortable position. That's not what it's all about. And you know, yeah. January in science, they talk about brain waves. And so you can even look at this scientifically. So for example, when we're all chatty and intellectual and in our heads, you can say we're in our gamma or beta beta brain waves, you know, but, but that's crazy making for us much of the time. So then when we begin to quiet the mind, we move into alpha, which is where we feel that peaceful state coming on. And then if we push it a little further, we can get into theta brain waves, which are so calm and so anxiety reducing. And that's all scientifically measured physiologically. So you can go and listen to theta brain wave music. You can download it off the internet and it plays that music while you're walking or doing whatever you do. And it quiets the crazy mind that we all have. <laughs> and uh, you write about this in your books, too. And I've experienced getting powerful messages that come through dreams. And uh, dreams are, you know, sometimes you wake up, you can't remember anything. But many times powerful messages will come through to you. And the reason you know that they're a message is you wake up and you can actually remember yeah. exactly what happened. Explain that to my listeners. I call these our dream visions. And what I believe is happening is that if we're in total relaxation in our sleep, then actually the soul can travel in the divine realms and have conversations with departed loved ones and with God and God consciousness and get a download for how to move forward. And then when we wake up, I know everybody listening has had a dream where they wake up going, gosh, I was with so-and-so last night and it was so real that I could even feel their, I could smell it, taste it, feel it. That's a dream vision. And mm -hmm. I've 
been blessed to have those my whole life. And that's why I can even write my books and say with confidence, when we leave the body and we travel through the divine realms, it is a pure love world. It is yeah. only down here that there is hatred, anger, judgment, judgmentalism. Yeah. One of the most powerful dreams that I had was after I lost my mother and we had had a contentious relationship, typical mother daughter stuff, you know, and she came to me in a dream vision and her message was so simplistic and her message was love is the only thing that matters. Yeah. And I needed to hear that. And I has stayed with me. And it was just like, I'm talking to you. The dream was so real. When you have these visions, um, cherish them. You know, I've only had three in my lifetime. I'm not as uh, lucky as you. But well, I, get to call, I, I get to call, I have so many departed out there that I get to call them in and say, hey, I need some guidance, you know, and they'll, they'll help me in any way that I ask. And that's true for all of us. All we have to do is reach out and say, hey, departed loved ones. Hey, God, God consciousness. Hey, angels. Hey, spirit guides. I need lifting up today. We don't ask for a new car. We ask to be lifted up into a higher point of view that empowers us and gives us wisdom to move forward. Oh. And that is always answered. Yeah. And if you put that out into the universe, uh, right before you go to bed yeah. and fall asleep, you may be surprised when you wake up that some messages maybe have gotten through to you. Uh, let's, let's talk about your, your divine lens how we yeah. shift our perspective from ego to the soul's wisdom. That's quite a, a jump, isn't it? It is. <laughs> That's a shift from gamma brain waves to almost delta brain waves. <laughs> got to yeah. got to make a huge leap there. But as humans, we have the ability to make that shift. And so all of my teachings, all my books, my classes, my sessions are all about helping us lift into the soul's view. And I'm even a soul regression therapist. So I can take people on a guided meditation, really, that helps them move into that beautiful, unconditional realm that we call God, God consciousness or divine realms and have that experience of living and seeing through their divine lens. And if you can't do that, then you just can sit in the quiet and meditate. And after you meditate, you can ask for guidance to be poured through you and, and you write quickly and you mm -hmm. let it or through you and every departed, every grieving mom, especially I've ever worked with, has mm -hmm. been able to have their child come through to them and help them get a conversation with them through writing. And it's so healing, so oh. healing. Yeah, yeah. We, we do a workshop on write your healing memoir. Yes. Workshop. And I think that is, uh, and, and I like what you said about just write it quickly. You don't need to worry about editing. You don't need to worry about spelling. You need to just express and let it all out. And it's a very therapeutic thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still working on my memoir. And, you know, every time I work on it, I discover new things about myself. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, January, I wrote a spiritual memoir called Water Oak, The Happiness of Longing. It's on Amazon. And I thought I was writing uh, one thing, one story. And once I quieted the mind and started writing quickly and letting it pour through me, my memoir poured through me in such a way that it healed me to write it. I could see my relationship with my mother, who much like you, it was a troubled relationship, but I could understand her backstory completely and how she did exactly the best she could. All of that came through in the writing of my story, healing myself and other people who struggle read my memoir and they feel healed by the story. Like it's like, if you can get through that, I can too. And that's why we need to share our stories because we empower each other. We help each other see behind the veil, so to speak, and go, look, that person might look all shiny and successful, but look what they've walked through and it connects us. 
I, I finished reading Water Oak, and I highly recommend it to our listeners. I'm curious, as a writer, how long did it take you to write it? And what kind of writer are you? Are you a morning writer? Are you a nighttime writer? Well, how that you- taught me taught me what kind of writer. I had already written a number of books before that, but it was coming from my journalism background of, you know, left brain logic and thinking about it and editing. And then this book said, nah, shut up. We're not going to write the book you think you're going to write. It just started pouring through me and I'd get up at the crack of dawn, really just at first light. And I would sit there and say, I'm not getting up from my computer for two hours, no matter how this writing is going. And I would have a goal, like I'd say, I want to write about this one phase of my journey. And I would write and maybe the first two pages were garbage, but then this clarity and voice would come through and I would write and write and write and I would not edit it then at all. And the next day I would do the same. And then after some time had gone by and I felt a need to organize, I would go back in with my editor's brain on (laughs) and start just cleaning it up a bit. But that book taught me the right way to write. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, and, and also, I I know you'll agree with me, it, it is a very difficult and it can be a very painful exercise to truthfully face the reality of the life you've lived. Um, It's a hard thing to do. I'm a nighttime writer and I write, you know, like two, three in the morning. And then without reading it, I go to sleep. And many times I've woken up the next day, I've come back to the computer and I've read things that I have no idea who wrote it. I totally understand. That's how it is. Like I would go back and read the manuscript and go, wow, that's brilliant. <laughs> like I didn't write that, you know? <laughs> I, I, I know. And it's it's like I feel in many uh, instances, my, my first husband was a brilliant writer. And I feel mm-hmm. in many instances, he's just stepped in and no, took over. Yeah. Because yeah. the writing, I would probably never be capable of. And I think yeah. I was just used as a channel, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even, you know, I grew up studying great writers and I went to graduate school and studied English and everything. And even the great writers, the great storytellers of our time, that's what they say. Like they say, you know, this wasn't really me writing this. You know, they they just say this really came through me in so many ways and surprised me. And I think any great work of art or any good writing doesn't come from our left brain logic mind. It comes when we open up to the higher divinity that we all have access to. Yeah. And let it just flow. Let it flow. For my listeners, have you ever met someone who was unforgettable? Well, I'd like to share with you some unforgettable people who have been on my show in the past. Have you ever met someone who was unforgettable? Someone who has touched your heart and soul? People who have faced difficult problems? People who have struggled to find solutions? People who fearlessly shared their stories? People who have not only informed you, but inspired you. People who have priceless personalities. I have been fortunate to host an internet radio talk show called January Jones Sharing Success Stories. And it has been my privilege to interview hundreds of guests. My guests have shared their stories, their struggles, their secrets, and their successes in their own words. In this book, we're talking about people dealing with problems such as incest, molestation, runaway kids, child abuse, drug abuse, polygamy, unemployment, scandal, and starting over. Then there are my guests dealing with difficult physical struggles such as blindness, cancer, and birth defects that are beyond traumatic. My guests have all been exciting, eclectic, and energizing. They have amazed, amused, and even astonished me. I have adored getting to meet them, and I adore sharing them with you. 
Attention all listeners, Priceless Personalities, Success Stories Shared by January Jones, Volume 2 is now available at Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle editions. You'll be able to meet 10 amazing people who will be sharing their own personal stories with all their struggles, successes, and solutions sprinkled with lots of humor and hope. Priceless Personalities features a teenager who becomes one of the famous Supremes from Motown, a nurse who has a humorist helps people to heal, an inspiring laughter yoga instructor, a mother dealing with the loss of a child, an incredible motivational speaker, a woman who married five times, a gifted paranormal nurse, a wise economist, a funny female humorist, along with an older man sharing his sweet childhood in the deep south. January's guests are all amazing and amusing. You will never forget meeting them. Go to Amazon.com for your own priceless experience. Welcome back with a priceless personality guest on my show, Sue Frederick. So wonderful to have you with us. Let's talk a little bit, Sue, about your amazing book called Bridges to Heaven. Uh, And this is just an affirmation of what we've been talking about, the connection. Yeah, good. I'm glad you're showing it. It's a wonderful (laughs) book. The connection you can have to people who are departed. Now, would you share with us a few, uh, some tales about connections you have facilitated. So the book has not only my stories of my departed coming back to show me they were okay, but also many other people wrote stories for the book of their experiences. But one of my favorites that I was just thinking about was my father, because he and I were always so close. And I write about this in the book. And when it was, he was dying of cancer, my family of origin was in huge disagreement about death and dying. And they wanted to do, they wouldn't sign the do not resuscitate orders, even though he was dying of lung cancer, which Mm -hmm. meant that if he started to die, they were going to try to do CPR. And my sister and I were like, no, you don't want to do that to dad. You know, if he's going to die, we need to let him go. And so it was this conflict in the family that so many families face when someone they love is dying. And on the day that I knew my dad was going to cross, he was in the hospital. He was quite ill. And, um, and I said, I want to be here to help him cross because I know that's what's happening. And my family in their Southern way said, no, Sue, we want you to go home and babysit the grandkids. Everybody had to take a turn of going home and taking care of the kids. And so they sent me home and I was very upset about it, as you can imagine. And um, because I was always the odd kid in my family, right? Never believed in the conventional belief systems. And so I went home and I got the kids down for a nap. And I've been meditating every day since I was in my 20s. So the first thing I did was sit down and do my meditation practice, close my eyes and just breathe and quiet my emotions, quiet my mind. And immediately right in front of me, my father appeared, pure physical apparition, looking young healthy, happy, like I hadn't seen him in years. And he was joking around with me the way he had always done when he was healthy and young. And we'd we'd say, dad, you should go to clown school, leave us alone, you know? (laughs) And then he just came right to me and was making me laugh. And so in my meditation, I was like, dad, what are you doing here? And then I was like, dad, what are you doing here? (laughs) And there was a phone right by me and I picked up the phone and called the hospital room. And my brother Jim answered and I said, dad just appeared in front of me. And he said, well, Sue, I guess maybe you are psychic because he had a heart attack. (laughs) But now the room is chaos because they're doing CPR on him. Uh And he said, it's awful in the room. And I said, don't worry, dad is not there. He's free. Uh He's happy. He left his body long before all that drama started. And that was such a beautiful affirmation from my dad that even when our loved ones appear to be struggling and suffering, suffering in some horrible experience of the body, they are already free. They're already visiting us, telling us that they're fine. And I've had so many experiences of that. They're on a they're on a different frequency, and I I always think of it like as radio waves going through the air, and they're all at different levels and different uh, 
uh, forests, different dynamics, but they're still there. But yes. you just don't you just don't recognize them. You know, <laughs> we were lucky to have a visitation, and that would be comforting for everyone in the family. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I always ask my guests before the show closes this question. Now, if you could have dinner or lunch with anyone in the world, living or dead, excluding me, who would you like to have dinner with? I think for me, it's um, Mary from the Christian tradition, the mother of Jesus, because okay. I think she was a powerful and is a powerful spiritual teacher. And I think she got kind of diminished in the rewriting of the Bible. <laughs> and so I'd really like to have tea with her and say, Mary, tell me your story, because you've come to me in prayers. You've come to me in visions. You've helped me so much in my life. And I want to hear your story, Mary. And I know that that would be a fascinating tea party to have. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. It's one I'd like to listen in. And for yourself and this world what we're in now with all of his challenges, who, who is your personal hero? Who do you look up to and who do you get your inspiration from? Well, right now I'm very involved with a group, a nonprofit organization called HelpingParentsHeal.org. And if any of you are grieving parents, you should go visit that website. But their founder is a woman named Elizabeth Boisson, who is an angel on earth. She's lost two children. Um, a young baby died and then her 19-year-old son died on Everest. And she is the shining light example of life continuing beyond the physical. And she has constant communication with her departed children. And she's taught so many other parents to experience that. And I get to be friends with her. She lives near me. We're having coffee this week for my birthday. And she's my hero, even though she's here still in the physical world. And you would think, oh, she's just a mom. And she's just the founder of a nonprofit She's an angel on earth and she inspires me every day. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, birthday, congratulations. <laughs> I'm going to be 16. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always said when I had Mary Wilson on the show from the Supremes, she and I were born in the same year and we both were from Motown. And when she was, when we both were turning 71, she was always telling me, we're really 17. You know? Right. Well, <laughs> in all honesty, yes, I'm turning 71 on Thursday. So now I guess I'll say I'm 17. Okay, you're right. <laughs> that, you know, it, it's good up to a point because now that I'm 79, I really don't want to remember. No, you can't that. say that. <laughs> 97, no. <laughs> well, it doesn't always work quite the way you want. <laughs> now for my dear listen listeners, I hope you've enjoyed our time together today with Sue. I certainly have enjoyed her. We've tried to be informative and we both have been trying to inspire you. My upcoming guests will all be eclectic, exciting, and energizing, just like Sue Frederick. Next week, uh, Jeannie Corcoran, the story genie, will be sharing her fabulous story be sure to sign on to my website. Now for my 79, I'm not gonna say 97, thought for the day. <laughs> to be honest with you, I miss the 90s when bread was still good for you and no one knew what kale was. <laughs> and the word keto had not even been invented. So I miss that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Everyone does. Thank you for entering the No Wine Zone. Please share our stories and our show with everyone you know. And remember, it's time to stop whining and start smiling. And if that doesn't work, then you can go and start eating chocolate. Lots and lots. And pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, dear Sue. And I hope you come back again very Thank soon. You so to our listeners, take care and stay safe until we meet again. We want to thank you for listening to January Jones Sharing Success Stories. Always remember Ms. Jones' personal mantra, if you can think it, you can do it. 
That's what all of our guests have done with their lives, and so can you. You are the ultimate success coach in your own life. All you need to do will be to start sharing your own story with your family and friends. We hope that our guest stories will encourage you to explore an equation in your future that will combine your creativity, plus connecting with others will enable you to be successful too. Always remember, your passion plus your purpose will equal prosperity as you explore the wonderful world of January Jones.